And good Friday morning, everybody. Taking a live look from our camera over Horsetooth Reservoir. Some clouds in the sky, but the sunrise able to peak above those as we get ready for one more hot day before we get a brief break from the weather. Good morning, everybody. Jordan Chavez here alongside Nusha Roy, Keely Chalmers, and Ed Green. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to all. T -G -I -S. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, and today, if they can get through a hot day, we the cool down's about 10 degrees this week. I think Saturday is going to be a lovely day in the low 80s. 87 is normal for this time okay. of year, so we're going to be in the lower 80s today, however, lower 90s. Right. Showers and thunderstorms will be back not quite as heavy as they were yesterday, and that's kind of good news. We do see temperatures in the 90s once again today. A little bit of a cool down tomorrow. Enjoy it because we are right back into the 90s, even warmer than we will be today for Sunday. So as we take a look at what we've got going on right now, almost at 70 degrees in Denver right now, you see a lot of 60s and a few 70s over the eastern plains. We're looking at 40s and 50s higher up at this hour and 62 over there in Grand Junction at this hour. We do have some showers and thunderstorms already over northwestern sections of the state, and I think that's where they're going to be mainly over the north for the elevated risk of severe weather that's from the northwest right through the metro area and into the northeast where some could be heavy once again again they'll be few and far between however and down to the south just general storms that all shifts tomorrow and the severe weather goes down to southeastern colorado for your saturday so 93 degrees today scattered late day showers and thunderstorms of those partly cloudy skies there's the cool down tomorrow 83 degrees with maybe an isolated storm right back to 94 degrees on your sunday we keep the 90s around on monday tuesday 89 degrees, lots of sunshine to go around, maybe an isolated storm back by midweek, and a high of 90. All right, thanks, Ed. Things pretty calm out there on the roadways on this Friday morning. Here is a live look, I-25 at uh, Park Avenue. And uh, yeah, we are slow going out there right now when it comes to, or calm out there, actually quiet out there when it comes to traffic. Let's go ahead and take a look at that traffic map. And you can see lots of green out there, not too much uh, problems, not too many problems. Westbound 36 Denver to Boulder, that's the green light. It'll take you about 19 minutes. We're looking at a 14 minute commute. Westbound I-70, E-470 to I-70. 76, not bad. An easy drive southbound I-225, I-70 to I-25. You got the green light there as well. 10 minutes for that commute. And if you're traveling between downtown and the Denver Tech Center, if you're heading south, it'll take you 14 minutes, 15 minutes if you are heading north. All right, thanks so much for that, Keely. Well, right now, police in Aurora believe the same person shot three people in two different locations last night. That man is in custody this morning, but there are a lot of questions that still need answers. Night News reporter Brianna Fernandez is following this developing story this morning. She joins us live in Aurora. Brianna, what more do we know right now? Yeah, so we know three people were taken to the hospital. Also, the man that was arrested was also taken to the hospital, police say, as a precaution. And you guys, Anusha Jordan, eight hours later, and we're still seeing a very active scene out here. I'm seeing Aurora police blocking off the intersection of Tufts. That's their third location where they found that man and arrested him. Let me just kind of show you this area right now. We are seeing yellow tape blocking off several parking lots around this neighborhood, and it goes all the way down back. It's still unclear when, when Aurora Police Department can provide more information about this investigation, but let me just kind of break down exactly what we know. So this map shows you three scenes that Aurora police are currently investigating near Smoky Hill and Quincy Avenue. They're all less than a mile from each other. Police say the first shooting happened just before 930 last night along Eagle Circle. A 50 year old woman was shot while she was inside of her car. Now, following that shooting, police say the man drove to Crystal Way about two minutes on the road and shot two people. There are a 64 year old woman 36 year old man who were walking in the area. That's when the suspect then drove off. And after those shootings, police found a red SUV on Tufts Place, where I'm currently at with a lot of damage. Take a listen. They located a vehicle that appeared to be damaged. Um, it's believed the vehicle was involved in multiple crashes. We don't believe with any of these people that have been shot, um, but the vehicle was damaged enough that it raised suspicion to the officers. Uh, they located this vehicle that which had bullet holes in it uh, and at the same time located a suspect matching the description that other victims that were able to relay to the responding officers in an apartment uh, just up the road from here on Tufts. 
Yeah, so we know officers arrested that 35 year old man inside of the apartment like you just heard from investigators. We know inside of that apartment they found four people plus several guns. It's unclear how they know those four people. If the suspect, the man, the 35 year old man that was arrested lived inside or if that was his permanent residence, still unclear. And of course, right now where Aurora police is trying to figure out if this was a random act or if he knew the three people who were shot. For now, I'm live in Aurora, Brianna Fernandez for Nine News. A lot of questions that our team is going to work hard to get answers for. All right, Brianna, thank you. This morning, we know that the two small fires burning on the Rocky Mountain Arsenal were started by humans. Those fires are now fully contained, and it's actually the second fire at the refuge in less than a week. A Rocky Mountain Arsenal spokesperson said the fire Saturday started by cigarettes. XL Energy has a new plan to prevent future wildfires sparked by its lines. XL released the three year $1.9 billion plan this week. If approved by state regulators, it would add hundreds of weather stations and cameras, add technology to better target planned outages, replace outdated equipment, increase line inspections by radar drones, and put 50 miles of power line underground. It would increase the average residential customer's bill by 9% or $8.88 a month. The Colorado the Public Utilities Commission still has to consider this plan. We are closing in on a week into the Oak Ridge fire burning in Pueblo County. It's still not contained this morning and growing. The burn area now sits at around 1,071 acres or about one and a half square miles. Officials say that fire is working through a lot of unburned fuels and it's been challenging because of the area's rough terrain. Lightning started the Oak Ridge fire on Saturday. Right now, a contractor based in Aurora is in custody in Boulder County. He's accused of stealing $1.3 million from victims of the Marshall Fire. Nine reporter Brianna Clark joins us live in studio. And Brianna, this person had contracts with several of the homeowners. Yeah, these were people who were trying to rebuild their homes that they lost in the fire more than two years ago. Investigators say Scott took their money, never finished the work. Deputies arrested Leona Scott yesterday. He is set to appear in court a week from Monday. Investigators say the 63-year-old wasn't properly licensed to build homes in Boulder County. We got our hands on a copy of a lawsuit filed back in October of last year, and it's giving us a clearer picture of what one family says happened when they hired Scott as their contractor. It shows on November 1st, 2022, Two people hired Scott's company to rebuild their home on Skyway Court in Boulder after it was destroyed in the Marshall Fire. The plaintiffs in the case say they paid Scott $930,000 for the first three phases of the project. Then in September, an engineer visited the site and found structural issues, putting a halt on construction. It goes on to say when the homeowners asked for their money back, Scott refused. The lawsuit is about six pages long and lists several other victims with similar stories. We will share more details from it at six o'clock. Right now, Scott is in the Boulder County Jail on a half a million dollar bond. We're also trying to learn more about the investigation from the Boulder County Sheriff's Office and the evidence that they found that led to the arrest. In the meantime, the Sheriff's Office says if anyone has more information or believes that they may be a victim, Contact the lead detective at the number on your screen, 303-441-1416. Reporting in studio, Brianna Clark, 9 News. And a sad situation for the people who are out all that money, Brianna. All right, thank you. Happening tomorrow, another sign of rebuilding after the Marshall Fire. The town of Superior will be holding a ribbon cutting to open its new museum that will replace the original mine camp house. The mine camp house was destroyed by the Marshall Fire in December of 2021. The mayor will be there to talk about the importance of the museum and its history. The ribbon cutting is scheduled for tomorrow at 4 p.m.